Hello everyone and welcome to another podcast, M&H Consultants. As usual, I have Anita Men on here, my partner who is the M, and I am Ron Howard, the H. We have a very special guest today who I will let Anita announce after I've talked about the breakfast. Yes, We have a very strange breakfast here today, a kind of a mix between Italian and whoever makes coconut water. (laughs) So so we have uh, coconut water to drink, which is very healthy, and pizza to eat, which is not very healthy. So it's it's, it's a balanced diet here. A balanced (laughs) diet, where you save on the calories and the fat here, you eat it in the pizza. But never mind, Anita, please introduce our special guest today. Yes, yeah, so before that, I'd like to, you know, clarify okay. why we have pizza for breakfast today. It's because we have a very unconventional guest who right. thinks in a very different way. And that's why we have an unconventional breakfast, which is pizza. Does we, it make sense? Yes, I know we have a creative uh, guest. Yes. I'm fairly creative when it comes to accounting, but unfortunately... <laughs> Not for anything else. <laughs> yes, Ron is very creative with numbers. Right. Yeah. So, um, hello everyone. I'd like to introduce a very close and a personal friend of mine, uh, Saira Ranj. I've known her for about three years now. And she is fairly new to Bahrain, all of four years, I think. That's correct. Uh, yes. Saira is an art educator and an artist herself. And she wears various other feathers on her cap which I will allow her to, you know, tell all of us. So welcome, Saira, to our podcast. Welcome, I'm yes. Very delighted, very happy that you said yes to us and you're here today with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. In fact, I'm quite excited about this one. <laughs> so nice. So uh, to get on with it, uh, can you please tell our viewers a little bit about what's your background? And uh, also help me justify why I call you unconventional. <laughs> Okay, on that note, let me tell you, does everybody know where they belong right from the time they are literally a toddler? Mm -hmm. Do you think they would know the path that they would take? No, it's really hard to know. Okay, let's just start by saying that uh, I would probably would have known that I would artistry would be the best path for me all the way from when I was like four years. Wow. Yeah, I would. So I would say it's justified the pizza for today, but I'll tell you how. Um, Right from the time I do mark making and get into chalks and, you know, the usual things that small children do. I've always liked um, art. And at the age of when I was in grade one, when I did this particular Christmas tree that the whole class raved about, I had decided then that's my path. That's amazing. <laughs> and that's the confidence. Four years old. Yeah. Not bad, that, is it? I can't I mean, even yeah, remember I mean, anything from then. Yeah, I can't even remember anything from then. Exactly. <laughs> and that's amazing, Saira. Such clarity at that age. It's uncommon. So this, that really makes you an unconventional thinker right from that age. <laughs> so uh, tell us a bit about yourself. What's your background? Were you always an artist or? Okay. Yeah. Okay, although we have dreams and we want to do certain things in life, I think it's quite important to be a brave heart, something that I was not. Okay. okay. I have to, I would encourage every single uh, teenager out there to be a brave heart simply because of the path that I have taken. It took me 17 years of the corporate field and another six years of education to finally do what I was meant to do a long time ago and hence. Um, So how did my journey start? Well, I grew up in Dubai. That's where my parents started their life uh, after they got married and had me. And um, yeah, so I went to schooling and did after school studies and uh, got into the travel industry. Okay. Simply because um, I guess art was not the recommended path for you to take yes, yeah. as a commercial venture it wasn't safe it wasn't safe enough. as a That's profession yes, yes it wasn't yeah. so you were although you were supported you were never encouraged to take that up as your career choice yes and so i went into i i joined emirates airline uh the industry and i was there um in various retail industries of the airline and travel for 17 years like i just wow. mentioned and all the way just 
using art as a hobby as something that i did in my as a pastime you never left art no. during those days you always kept doing that on the side no matter what yes. you were doing to earn your bread and butter right that's correct yes because it kept me afloat it's something that i looked into it's the introverted side of me which took uh you know took placement away from the crores and noises that outside that you have you go back into your art world and that brought me a lot of peace was the art work just for yourself or you were selling also very honestly i wasn't selling although uh at the age of 14 i did exhibit and my artwork was sold so i've had a few on my own you know exhibit and 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 a few people who asked for commissioned works things like that okay. but rough very rarely okay you know, like once in a few years kind of yes i think things start rolling when you put all that intention and energy towards that then it then it's how it starts rolling right absolutely yes so till i got into education which was a uh, educational field where i worked as a primary kindergarten teacher wow that's when i came to know this is possible to make money out of it and you know get into a uh, a commercial venture with art okay so you you understood that it's a sustainable uh, passion yes nice yes great so uh, so then you came to bahrain and why yes. did you come to bahrain okay to keep the family intact <laughs> i packed my bag and baggage to join my partner out here and the entire family moved here 4 years ago mm mm-hmm. and uh, i said to myself no more working looking for jobs in the employment field it's high time i did my own thing okay that's when i set up created and uh, so your company is called created um, and you do a lot of things under that banner yes uh, so you not only teach art uh, yes. to children you teach art art to adults as well yes um, and you do a lot of other creative pursuits under it like uh, writing Yes. And even uh, public speaking for That's children good. and adults alike. That's so good. I know all of this because some I have always been a part of it in some way or the other. Right. Um but how has Bahrain treated you so far with all your dreams? Uh it's been an incredible journey and I have to say that uh wholeheartedly because when I came here there was no set plan that I would you know start a business or anything i was wondering testing the seas to see what what my plans are and when i decided that okay this is what i want to do um the setup here is quite what should i say it's 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 very easy for a newbie to set up shop mm, uh, yes from sigilla entry barriers are less yes mm. from sigilla to lmra to moic all the systems are in place and uh, everything that you know it's you just follow the process one thing leads to the next and things are quite transparent i thought for a new person to set up shop it was incredibly uh, you know uh, of ease yeah yeah so i think that uh, tells us that bahrain is such a fantastic place right? i've i've worked in dubai it's very difficult to set up a business <laughs> get the required visas for employees yeah, to- yeah. You're all over the place, visiting many places, hundreds of people in front of you. It's much much easier and more streamlined here. Yeah. It is, yes. It is. And do you get all your information in one place too? Yes. Yeah. You do. <coughs> and and people are like every time you hit a barrier, you just pick up the phone and dial the required number and you get solutions yes. instantly and you know it it really is helpful. Yeah. and workable solutions. Yes. Yes, absolutely. that's most important. Yes. Sometimes it's just words out there and you it, it won't really work for you. Yeah, I, yeah. I I feel the marketing is not as much, hmm. but the actual operations is so good. Smooth, okay. Yeah. Okay. Ron, would you oh, like I to see, ask a question? I mean, you're in the art education market which I know nothing about. So <laughs> I mean, don't schools have their own art teachers, for Do example? S- Yes, uh most schools have their own art teachers, but art is just one small thing that you got to tick off in the box. Right. There is no focus on actual art. If you ask most students, they are either bored or have nothing much to say commendable about art. And that is something that we really need to change. So do you go into schools and take the contract teaching art? 
Well, I've approached quite a few schools. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say anything has come out of it so far, but we've uh, approached corporates as well in similar uh, facility. And that is making more leeway than this. But, Strange, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> it is. How wow. is interesting art in Bahrain? I mean, I, I've seen one, one of the sheikhs, he, he's an artist and have exhibitions at the um, Bahrain Harbour and things yes. like that. But that's all I know. Yeah, but there's, it's a, there's a thriving market out here. There's street art, there's live events, there's museums and galleries galore. So there is a thriving community of artists who are willing to do a lot over and above. Uh, even the government is quite supportive of it. So the cultural fabric is, is there. It's like, there. Uh, And in all aspects of visual communication, mm. like yesterday we went for an event where I came to know in 1947 it was set up. It was a cultural organization. Yes, yeah. in Bahrain. Yes, and 1947. 75 years that organization has been running. Yeah. It's an it's area amazing. I'm not involved with. Yeah, I, I yeah. but it's it's there. It exists and it's it's doing its own thing. But it's just that it's not probably available to the larger public, or they don't know about it. Yeah. So awareness is a lot less around this area, isn't it? Yes. So uh, my next question was about that. Do you think that in Bahrain, would you call it a mature art market, or there are like huge gaps that need to be filled? It's definitely not a mature art market, although it has a history of its own. Uh, you know, as with everything, there's always expansion, there's always growth, there's always development that you can do. Uh, one of the gaps that I would like to really uh, us to focus, Bahrain as a country, and uh, me to be a, playing a big part in it, is how we can get our students to um, actually every time a student wants to go into fine arts or learn about visual communication they tend to go abroad yeah there is nothing either here or even to a large extent in the Middle East yeah uh, venues for when you're talking about commerce you're talking about stem you're talking about sport yes there are things available but for us there is nothing yeah. so we need to address sort of that luck, gap. plug mm. in that gap that is to make uh, as uh, that is to actually you know it's only possible if you can give confidence to the parents that art is actually a viable field yes where somebody can you know yeah, earn a living a out of it, it. Yeah. yeah yes or you don't have to be a master at your craft to be able to earn from it yes absolutely because that is what most parents would you know start discouraging the child i mean you're not an art prodigy you may not find enough success right. so to make you secure just take the other regular streams of the education mm -hmm. and keep yourself safe that's right, right. so it's correct it's it's, it's a catch-22 so yeah. you've got to start somewhere yes so yeah but art is honestly living the life of an artist is just like any other job right you know you just have the creativity and uh, those aspects are different but otherwise uh, it is a 24-7 job where you know you've got to do so much more yeah. than just paint correct you know so now uh, coming back to a question uh, where I'd like to know how has art been viable to you since you started creative created okay so is it really working out for you what, yes. and what do you do under created which is really working well for you okay so one of the things that we did target when we started initially, of course, I just spread the word initially. And then one of the things I felt all our customers or the students that came to us were either children or ladies. Okay. Okay. And uh, artists to do with, while you create art, there's a lot of vulnerabilities. There's a lot of feelings. There's a lot of emotional intelligence that you're tapping into. And I wonder why the men are away. <laughs> So I think there is a huge potential for men to let go of being, a, you know, even perfectionism to let go of all of that and just be and be in the moment. So with regards to where created, uh, you know, I think more and more we need to tap into that energy, get people who've never held a, a brush. brush to start. Give Sounds anybody. Like me, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I knew you were coming to me. But she would really yeah. make you paint. And I, I I know so many such examples of where she made people paint who have never ever painted before. I think before. I'd be an impressionist because whatever I paint, I wouldn't be able to know what it is. 
Guess. <laughs> yeah, guess. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so uh, among all the services that you offer, yes. which one, which are the ones that are really making money for you now? Okay, art is definitely making money for me. Uh, which Illustrate has various things under it, which is we do the art education bit, as well as we hold live events. Okay. So when you are uh, plugging it up with corporates in that particular area, it really does help. Uh, so why why would a corporate hire you to? paint like what okay there are various areas that you need to uh, tap into for mm -hmm. example one uh, uh, one particular company said okay we need to relax we need to enjoy ourselves and just before our annual party let's do something that is creative that is different mm -hmm. so we organized a sip and paint whereby you have your favorite beverage next to you and you follow directional activities and in a social network, you end up letting your hair down. Okay. You really enjoy yourself. Okay. You so know? That's a team building. That is a yeah, team bonding. bonding you know, there's yeah. a lot of team bonding there. Excellent. So, so, so that has been happening a lot for you? Yes, okay. that has been happening a lot. And I, I noticed that few of the artists have picked up on that as yes. well. Uh, earlier, it was not. I really haven't there. heard of a sip and paint before, uh, actually, yeah. when you launched it first. I think after that, I've heard of a lot about it. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. So that's that's one but of the things. But it's a great concept. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Better than climbing a mountain or something like that. <laughs> and safer. In this part of the world. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, now I want to come to uh, something more unconventional, which yes. is NFTs. Oh yes. Can we explain what an NFT is? Uh, so yes, so an NFT is a non-fungible token where any kind of art is turned into digital art and then it is uh, sort of sold again yes. and again and again without um, the original owner losing the credit for having created it and continuing to earn from it. Right. So. Um, what do you think about NFTs and art and do you think that this trend is going to go somewhere? Are you someone who's in favor of it or not? I'd just okay. like to know your thoughts. Oh, definitely it's path breaking. It is uh, an industry first mm -hmm. and it is something very unconventional to the to the point of uh, are you comfortable with it? You know? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> For every lay person, including myself, when it came out initially, it was like, how far will this go? Yeah. But I definitely think it is the way to go. Just like, just like so many things have happened over right. the years. Uh, you know, this this is some. You know, it can be a bit daunting. Kind of like you're in a gaming room by yourself, looking at all these 4K monitors. Mm. Uh, but I think it is very much sus uh, sustainable okay. in the future, and. Uh, it depends on different levels of art, right? Yeah, but some of the art, the kind of money that it's fetching is yes. a, it's a little tragic. Uh, it's fetching <laughs> too much money and it, you can't, it doesn't even qualify as art, you know? Yeah, but what exactly qualifies as art? Because everything see, is art. Yeah, I guess. That's how you look at it. Subjective. It's perspectives, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, but yes, um, and a lot of NFT exhibitions have happened in the country. Yes, I think one definitely happened in, 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 in the Bali. recent past. Yeah. Did you get a chance to look at it? Uh, I have uh, parts of it, um, and it was quite intriguing. Yeah, that's where I bring all these uh, ideas right. forward. Yeah, I was just thinking of how far is it going to, you know? Yeah. What is what is the next game plan? But I know for a fact that it it is all about the number of followers. Uh, it's all interlinked. Okay. So for you to launch your own thing, you need a huge number of followers. Yeah. So you've got to work on these different areas before you get into the whole uh, NFT game. Okay. Yeah. So. It yeah. So now I know what it is. So let's go back to conventional art. Yes. Yeah. So what are your plans for next year or expansion, and how are you going to make art more accessible to? everyone okay for example somebody like me who unfortunately has never heard of create it no. before we're gonna go for a session right after this <laughs> <laughs> well, I get my paint <laughs> no you don't get anything you just bring yourself to us and we take care of the yeah, rest she gives you everything no excuses wrong well not just me but i'm sure yeah. there are many out there who are like me so. no i get you so um see the last year has been uh, 
this year in january we launched our very first created launched its very first exhibition and it was it was amazing for where us where was that yeah um it was jan 30th and it lasted for two whole weeks where where oh in bahrain financial harbor yeah bahrain uh, they are uh, they are very supportive but bahrain financial harbor is extremely the harbor gate is extremely supportive of artists and art as an industry and uh, so i was one of those who was supported tremendously um what we had done is we had put out i'll just go into the details yeah, yeah sure the there was a challenge on instagram that i put up for created for bahrain because bahrain reached its anniversary anniversary and um we said okay let's paint different parts let's get a photographer to put a photograph of an iconic place in bahrain or even just random places and we could recreate that in different mediums so even if it's a picture of the trade center we create that in pencil and charcoal and watercolors and acrylics you name it it's up and to digital. you and digital yes yeah. yes yeah and uh, we were encouraging all amateurs as well to pick up the pen or pencil or uh, brushes so that was how we started it and the you know challenge went on for more than a month and it picked up very well finally we decided let's you know bring it off the digital screen and let's print it let's get it out there let's exhibit and that's how the first exhibition started for for us right so yeah. and i yeah. participated as well yes i did yes did. absolutely did you win <laughs> it was oh, not no. a competition <laughs> just thinking there yeah everything is a competition like for the, me what huh? the icons uh oh the building i don't know it did of course yeah. it did oh, okay yeah because uh, it was under her guidance right <laughs> She made sure that it was what it was supposed so to be. You're, you're an artist But also. Now I am since she's my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anita, you're being far too humble, you know that. But she's I, got a very good hand and I always tell her that. <laughs> and I think uh, I am someone who's never formally learned art ever. Even in school like she said it was just one check box to be ticked. That's it. But, but I've done engineering drawing but that's again curriculum it's not using really art and stuff like yeah. That, right? yeah so but this during the pandemic it was the first time that I had a time on my hands and and she was very encouraging that try at least try it and I did and I was really wonderstruck that I could actually paint something like this but all kudos to her because she's the one who made sure that the outcome was really good so anybody who thinks that they cannot paint Go to see you. Uh, yeah, yes, absolutely. Definitely, they everybody can paint. That is what uh, she wants to kind of you know. Okay. So yeah. what's we do for 2022, 23? Okay. So the thing we just talked about the uh, created exhibition. yeah the yeah. exhibition. So what we are going to do is we're going to go global. Oh yes. My so God. the plans, yeah, we've already actually have in place to two particular countries. Okay. Namely, my own. two countries we are talking about the uae as well as india, india. yes different places in india okay. and probably one more which i will not name at the moment okay. because it's still under finalization okay but so the exhibitions are going there and also we're going to have workshops in these countries as well that's brilliant so, yes oh so that is something that i'm really looking forward to because you know the whole when will that roll out uh in august of this year is part 1 and by november december is part 2 So oh, that's really exciting. Yes. I think it's a big milestone for someone who's just started a business so recently and for you to kind of, you know, go ahead and do all of this. I'm so so thankful to the people out here who've been able to help me do this. Okay. And uh, I, now it's my turn. Yeah, to say this, but you've been one of the iconic people who've really oh. been behind, you know. See, what I notice about Bahrain mm. is the fact that this uh, people are not just business professionals. There's a humane side to them. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, support. There's a lot of, you know, uh, they help you um fulfilling your vision in their own way mm -hmm. you know they refer you and you, you know that's why yeah. i say you were really helpful right in the beginning and you believed in the vision that i saw for myself so i think what you had in your passion kind of you know always i could see it and it reached me and resonated so 
don't think it's a very big deal. Oh, <laughs> not at all. It is a very she big call deal. You're an iconic person. I know, right? Yeah. I shall not wow, forget that. Wow, we'll make sure that that's, the volume goes up when, on the podcast, when that's said. <laughs> Wow. I like that. So, <laughs> so that's how you're scaling up the business. Yes. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm from the world of finance. So yes, art and money do go together, don't yes. they? It's very, very expensive paintings, for example. So may I ask if this is quite profitable for you? I right. know this is not why you're in the business, right. I guess. Yes. <laughs> but. If, if it is profitable, then it's an advantage, isn't it? Absolutely. So, is it? Yeah, I would I would definitely say it's a business just like anything else, yes. any other business, and it has to be considered that way. We are far away from the times of the starving artist, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, Why is that always a picture in yeah, everybody's exactly. head? Exactly. The, the 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 you know that is the fight that we have to fight and win <laughs> you're to change that perception yes yes see art is either the starving artist or up there where you're talking about yeah your there's nothing in between. in between that is the gap you see there is a lot in between that is not mainstream mm-hmm. and that is what we need to encourage to get out there so when you say um is my business profitable definitely otherwise i would not be able to sustain it now art is in different forms like uh, when you're looking at it as an activity so there is the education bit that is your teaching to students then you're exhibiting okay so your work is being bought mm-hmm. and sold that aspect of it and then there is the corporate organizations yes. the events that you're happening so there is a range of activities uh, financially that you can look into that anyone who wants to do art can look into well the reason i asked you is that it might be an expensive hobby for example and as you said there's the starving artist mm-hmm. who wants to keep his own art or her own artistic license and will not work for customers mm-hmm. and there's, there's those who work for customers who may give up some of that artistic license and get paid for it right you, you seem to be kind of halfway there halfway in between yeah I, I i like the way you've pointed that out because i'll tell you how it is you can always paint for yourself and not for the masses or the classes or whatever it yeah. is you can paint for yourself in your own time but if you want it to sustain long term and you want an activity obviously you've got to pay your bills they are going to look you in the face and how do you do that so you look tap into the other aspects where it is possible to create revenue uh, and uh, that's how you bridge the gap. I suppose the difference is you'd still be doing this even if you were not making money, right? Because I'm guessing outside of what I call normal working hours, you're still doing art. Which you did, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. I did. It always started as a hobby and today it's gone full circle, Mm. which I should have done when I was in my 20s, which I was not a brave heart for, like I said. Uh, the reason is because you think it is not scalable it is not uh, a viable option viable option but it is Um, the image that comes in your mind is a a canvas a brush like you said expensive paints none of that is true Uh, in a week if I get one day to paint it would be great because I'm so busy doing so many other things. There is the marketing bit. So I'm with my laptop, my Mac sitting down and doing all of that. The paperwork, the marketing, then the actual scheduling of classes. So there's so many things and your sales and business development. Um, so. This iconic person could <laughs> help you with You've the You've given him some word now. He's not going to leave I it. like this. <laughs> wow. I don't know what else to say about that. Now you can write, my name is Iconic Anita. <laughs> yes. I think you should take over again. I, I'm stunned at that. <laughs> he's, fe- he's feeling bad. I know. We'll you better give him a good adjective. <laughs> so, uh, no, we have to come up with, some, with something. Some really good adjective for Ron. Right. Yeah. Something in rhymes. Legendary. Legendary. Uh, who is it? <laughs> yes. Legendary sounds good. Legendary Ron. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so the next step, Ron, is for you to also take the brush and go to Saira and see if you can paint. And I'm sure you can. So, what I should do is paint before I meet you, go through some sessions with you, and paint the same again, 
and see if there's any improvement before and after <laughs> why not why not but do, right. would you would you know what to start with a lot of people no, don't know do what to guidance. start with Ah, uh, you said before and after, right? No, but you tell me what's paid before. Ah. Mm-hmm. It could be anything. This yeah, it could be anything. Could be this. this, but you're the boss on that. So <laughs> you tell me what's paid. I'll try it. Go through a few sessions and create it. See if it's an improvement. But does it need to be an improvement? Because I will have enjoyed myself. That's what it's about, isn't it? I like the way you're looking at it. Being yes. a numbers guy and talking about just. Enjoying yourself, yeah, yeah sure. I'm not talking about the theory of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, it's about enjoying yourself. Yes. Yeah, but I you think, learn best in yeah. moments of fun and enjoyment. Yes. And there is a lot of learning, as you would yes. know, right? There is uh, a lot of learning. Yeah, there is a lot. But of it's learning. it's not tedious. You feel that okay, there's so much technicality that could probably go into painting something complex, but actually there isn't because. I think it's her teaching style that they, she breaks it down into that nano steps that it's really easy for you to just go step by step and get there. So, well, I, I'm in a profession where there are a lot of rules, so just think like that. I mean, with art, it's, it's open much wider, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, right. So it's it's a new way for your brain to connect with things, right? Uh, you're always giving me new ways to think. <laughs> <laughs> So uh just uh, we finished our set of questions Sarah okay. but uh, it was obviously I know you and I know what you have to offer to Bahrain and hopefully to a lot of other places in the world uh do you have any parting comments on to parents right and to the children not to children but the parents who might be watching this podcast right what do you what do you want to tell them about how they should view art and if they really see that there is a potential in their child how can they nurture it Okay. Um I really do have to say from the times that I was in school to today there's a huge leap. Uh, a lot of parents are now open to art as an extracurricular activity, but I would say um you know it if you have passion in the job that you're taking up, you will give it your all and all of us need to work be it whatever field right? Yes. So even it comes to art, I would say to parents please encourage that um different thinking that unconventional thinking in your child hmm. if he or she wants to spend some time doing something different hmm. let them be put uh, let them do it on their own or even put them in classes but do not uh hand hold them and tell them it doesn't look as good as it's supposed to be because that's that criticism kills You're right you know so it's all about supporting encouraging and letting them be so that they can take the journey forward it's something that they can go go back to in the times when nothing else is available like during the pandemic oh yes we all went into that journey yeah trying to explore what we have to offer other than what we've been offering all these years you know yeah yes i think pandemic was very useful in that sense yes <laughs> art stores ran out of materials yes. yeah they did <laughs> everybody was being creative yes, yes. <laughs> so, so we do look to the arts in times when we are down when we need yes. to explore ourselves when we you know yes absolutely the reflection you know that's the humane side that's of true. life So uh Saira thank you so much this was as usual very interesting for me I keep learning something new from you every time I speak with you and Ron Ah uh, very interesting for me in a whole new area isn't it also. yeah and if you want to wrap this up iconic person <laughs> then uh, please tell the audience where they can find us I think we can run a contest. How many times was the word iconic used in this podcast? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yes, th- this was such a wonderful session. Saira, thanks once again. Thank And you very much. Thank for you for all the me. updates, uh you can follow us on Instagram at mhconsultants_ph. And for our podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel mhconsultants. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.